What is happening, peoples? Happy Sunday afternoon to all of y'all. Um, getting ready to get started on the uh, burner I got here. I haven't been checking out the chat, so let me check it out real quick. I understand this is a Sunday. Most people are either watching football, possibly out flying if they can, or... Um, Doing honeydews, yard work, whatever. But um, I didn't fly today because I had to do some stuff to get caught up on all my orders. And then um, I wanted to do an unboxing for this. Um, I want to get this in the air sometime next week. Um, so I wanted to make sure that it was done right and I wasn't rushing, so I wasn't going to rush real quick to get it done for those weekends flying. I think today would have been a decent day. There's cloud cover now, but I think it was a decent day. So I um, stayed home, built the burner. I've got a special prototype burner that I'm going to be using in this one. And um, we have tree trimmers coming to our complex, so I hope the wife moves stuff around on the patio just so that um, we have stuff that won't get messed up. Um, so let's see. I say howdy to people that are here. We got EQRC, Boss223, Mr. Randy Huffins, Alan Gentry, um, who else? Ron for the Hills Mining, Gary S. So thank you guys for hanging out with me on this fine Sunday afternoon. So let me give you a glimpse as to what it is we're going to be doing. But I'll hopefully let a few more people get in here um, but there's what we got going um, it's the package here got my battery I'll show you guys this this is a new prototype burner I've got that I'm gonna be trying out in this setup so um, we're gonna be doing that in a little bit just kind of threw it together here in the living room I haven't opened the box at all this is the way the box came from FedEx hasn't been um, opened at all, so it will be an actual unboxing. I didn't undo anything. Ken Sprouse, what's up? Um, Gary S., I think I have a burner on the way for you, if I remember right. I just did your labeling yesterday. So, um, Steve George, what's up? So, let's put that away for now, but... Um, Anybody have any questions or anything that they want to ask now that they've got my full attention? Alan, I know you were trying to get a hold of me earlier, but I've been pretty been pretty busy. So um, if you had questions, now is the time to ask because I can go through that with I can do something. I've got you guys got my full attention. So I see more people coming in. Nate, he is out doing full scale stuff today. He's uh, preparing. For He's preparing for his for private pilot's license, and his mom is doing something IFR related. So, there. Um, that's what he told me. Getting ready. What's up, Craig Beaven? So, any questions anybody might have? Because I am all ears at the moment. I have. Um, you guys have got my full attention at the moment. And then um, if we get to questions and people ask what they want, then I'm just going to start um, getting this box opened up. So I'll wait for a little bit, and then we will get started on this build. Well, not even really a build. I'll just pull it apart, pull all the... Uh, all the parts out and then I'll get to the fuse and I'll install the fire booty so um, this is a special um, prototype too that my 3d printer guy did for me um, it's a little different looks more like an actual uh, exhaust nozzle but this is actually more aerodynamic. I'll show you what it looks like compared to the other one here in a minute. EQ, let's see. It's not showing any breakup on my end, so I don't think it's on my end. 
Um, boss. Everything's moving. Um, yeah, you can, you can send a money order. That's fine. Um, you have my email. If not, I'll type it in. Send me an email here. And uh, we can get that going. Yeah, I'm inside and I'm right by my router, so it should be clear. Um, boss, you may want to reset your stream, close it, and open it again, see if it happens. Um, EQ, there's your, there's my email. Um, send me an email and we'll get you, get you worked out. As I was saying, though, this is the new prototype burner. Looks more like a an actual afterburner, a little more aerodynamic. Um, I'm going to be setting that out. Um, and, yeah, it looks like the gripping might be a little complicated. I don't think it will be too bad, um, but we'll see. Um, Problem is, most people will uh, skip a couple steps that make the plane harder to deal with. So I'll try to go through it and do it the uh, try to get things done the right way. This is just going to be going through opening it up, and then I will um, install the burner, and that's it. I'm not going to do anything else, not today. But. Um, let me switch to that view really quick, and then I will grab something to show you guys. I'll be right back. All right, so so I was showing you the other burner. This is the original. Well, this is what they normally look like. This is the original adapter, which is cool, and it's got the little uh, ridges in there to strengthen. These have worked really good, but my 3D printer guy said he wanted to try something different, so he made me this so you can see the difference between the two. It's a little bright right there. Let's see the difference between the two. This is this one here is a little bit more aerodynamic. They're both good, but this is the shape that's actually more aerodynamic than this one. But they're both good. Ricky, what's happening? Yeah, Ricky's already flown his several times, and he's had um, pretty good luck with his. So um, let me see what people have been saying. Check up on the chat. What's up, Airvexed? Um, EQ, I hope you saw my email email address. Um, Airvex, right now we have it for two, um, but it's like I said, it's just a test. It's just a prototype, and I'm trying them out on my stuff. So the first one's going to be going in the Gripen, and then the next one will be going on a 40 millimeter size motor, but I don't know which one. 
Um, Ken Sprouse, yes. The Mirage, I do have um, a burner for that. Just depends on which one you want. I have the nine blade outrunner, nine blade inrunner, twelve blade um, outrunner. You just have to let me know. I pretty much make everything for um, the 80, 70, 80, and 90 millimeter free wing birds. Um, what's up, Nathaniel Pulling? It's Ricky Thor, did you get the fly today or no? I was going to, but um, I opted not to. No, Lee Davidson, this is just today. Um, because I wanted to, and I see more people coming, so I'll get I'll get started here. I wanted to show people the gripping, and then do a quick install so that they could see how that works too. I'm still going to do a show tomorrow. I may this may not be very long. We'll see. It just depends on how many people come through, but um, may as well get started on. As we get started on what I was going to do, because I see not a whole lot of questions, which is all good. So let me put this thing up. You will be able to hear me, but you won't see me. So let's get started. I'll uh, pull this thing apart. I'm gonna put the mouse to somewhere else. I'll put it on the chair. But, um, so as I said, I haven't opened this at all. This is all straight, same as it came from FedEx. And if there's a little shaking, sorry, but, um, I've got it on a fold out table, a folding table and, um, it might shake a bit, but yeah, this is the blue tape has never been cut. I'm actually doing all the actual unboxing right now. All right, so let's get it opened up. So like, like I said, sorry for the shaking if there is any, but it's on a light table. So as I said, I'm just open it now. I haven't opened it at all. This is as it came. Ooh. So I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, but most likely I can't at the moment. It's shaking, guys. Again, I'm sorry, but it's got to be what it is for now. This thing out. From one box to another. All right, so here are All right, so let's see. What's up, Pete Lane? So I'm going to cut through the tape. Let's tape on how many sides. There and here. So freshly open. You're seeing it just as I am. Ta -da. So here's all the little bits, screws and such. That's not a whole lot of screws, so it should be fairly easy. So to the side, there's the manual. I we'll use this for basic setup. Um, I'll get with my boy Ricky and other people that have already flown it to figure out the rest. Um, but let's get the pieces out and then I'll get to the fuse. 
Wow, more people, 21 people in here. Okay, cool. So, Ricky, you said something. Let's see. You said it has a plastic cone inside the intake if you didn't know. Okay, cool. I'll take a look. But I'm going to go through all of this stuff. I'm not going to do any building on the plane itself. But I will um, get that get that fuse out and uh, put the uh, put the uh, fiery booty in there. Let's get all this stuff. Open. Okay, so let's start with the first piece here, which is the vertical stab. It's pretty nicely done. Wow, that's already loose. So they got actual hinges in there. That's cool. This stuff actually looks pretty good. Pretty well done. I'm going to leave the plastic on for now. I'm not pulling that out, but I'll set that over here. Let's get this open. I think these are the wings. You know, Freewing does a good job with their packaging. And the finish is really good on this. Very good. Pretty thick, too. Thick airfoil. Wing. Set that over here. It's one side. Let's get the other side. That's the other wing. And again, all these surfaces are actually hinged, so there's no foam to work to get them ready to ready to to use. Work perfectly right off the bat. Put that aside. Okay, so this is just one part, one piece. Let's cut that apart. Some tape. Inside. There. Hold on a second, guys. Headphones don't reach that far. Let's get that off. So now this is the second part. So now we have the canards. Well, with this, um, the decals they put on here are pretty cool. Look like they're on there pretty good. This is this plane is going to get sealed before it's flown. So I want all of that. Um, I want all of that paint and, and the decals to stay in place. There's the nose cone. This just popped right out of the bag. What I'm liking that they're, what they're doing lately is they put the magnets and a little tongue there to keep it in place, make it harder for it to come sliding out. So there's two parts to the um, fuselage here. There's the actual rear part of the cone. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not going to bother putting this stuff on today. I'm just showing you the parts. But let's look in there. That looks pretty clean. It's pretty clean inside for the most part. Looks pretty easy. They didn't get much overspray on paint, so that should glue in place pretty easy. And then let's get to a couple other parts here. Where did I put my knife? There it is. There's a spar. It's an actual spar there. And then inside of the spar is the famous go get em wire from a free wing here to help you get the, get the parts. The lines all the way through. I will use that for the burner. That over there. So now we're to the fuse, and this is the part that I, oh, let's get to the wing rails first. So these are the wing rails for the. Uh, I don't know if they have ordnance for this. Maybe that's what I grabbed. I don't know. I'll take a second to check out the chat. Wow, ring rails are long. So there's the wing rails, typical free wing quality, which is plastic and 
plastic and foam. Pretty cool. All right. So now this is the part we're going to use to get the uh, get the burner in. So let me pull this out. Probably going to take my headphones off for this. We're going to pull this apart. Yeah, so the plane's in pretty good shape. I don't see any dents or dings or anything wrong. Um, did a good job packing it. Yeah, everything's really good. So this is cool that it is this way because I'll be able to see that fiery booty in there when I'm done. So. This is another cool thing I didn't realize. There's vents here for the uh, battery bay. Let me check out the, uh, the chat here. Sorry if I haven't seen what you guys are saying, but I can't really look at it when I'm working on that stuff. Cool, glad to hear it, Gary. Um, boss two, two, three. Yeah, we'll figure that out. And yeah, Pete Lane, no factory booty burner. Um, I don't know if they're going to do that. We'll see. Um, I know Justin Law and some other people that are major, major fanboys on motion have been doing some other stuff, but, um, we know what I'm going to use cause that's all I use. So, um, let's figure this part out. Let's flip the plane over. Looks like it's just two screws for the booty burner, as Pete just called it. So give me a second. I'll get the uh, screwdriver, and I'll be back. So, let's see, there's still 24 people here. Thank you, Hector LeBron, what's up? I just got your um, postage done yesterday. Um, just so everybody knows, too, I have um, quite a few. I think I printed out 23 labels yesterday. So, um, and I build every single one of those orders by hand. Y'all got to give me time. I can't do stuff um, immediately because I'm... I do every one by hand and make sure that they're done right. So it takes time. On all my recent orders, I've been saying three to four weeks lead time. That's really actually pushing it, but I'm just doing that because it could take a lot longer than two weeks to get this done. For the most part, I'm able to get them done fairly quickly, especially if they're single orders. They go fairly quick, but... I have to give myself time because I do all the building myself, all the components. I build on me own. Pete Lane, I'm not worried about it. If it happens, it happens, but I'm not really in this for that. Um, meant for the hobby, for the fun of it. So let's see. All right, so as you can see, fans right there. And we are going to some burner installation so this is now that the planes apart it'll make it really easy so let me flip it over and get the canopy off like I said before that's really cool they've got it vented so Eric can get through it's pretty cool all right put that off to the side Oh, well, there's more stuff inside. What's this? So it must be like a little avionics hump or something. I'll have to figure all this stuff out later. But all this will go back in the box once I get this burner out and get the burner in. So 
Let's flip it. Hold on, just in case you guys hadn't seen this Guniac shirt. And as I, as you can see, scrolling, you can get your merchandise there if you want. I'm gonna have a couple new designs coming out soon. Um, so, do they not have a UBEC on this? Looks like it's just a BEC. That's interesting. I don't trust onboard BECs, so that will be changing. But anyway, let's get started on it. Get this up to where you guys can see. So I'm not going to do anything crazy fancy. I'm just going to install. And I have a servo tester here so you can see what it looks like inside the plane. I'll do a dry fit for the rear part. So that you'll see what it looks like with it on. Again, sorry for the shaking because my camera is on a small light table. Also note that I have my phone as the camera, so I'm not going to be able to see any ch any uh, Facebook messages or anything if you guys are sending me stuff or emails. I can't even look at that right now. But let's get this done. This is going to be just just this is just to show you how quick this can get done too, because this will not take long. It's going to take longer to pull everything apart than it will to get this stuff together. So, all the screws set aside. So now they have a little hold down here for the ESC, which is really good. Keeping in place, and they have some friction material there to keep it from sliding, which you want, which is good. And some forward thinking by Freewing. Let's get that motor out. So here is the motor. This is the uh, nine blade unit. I'm gonna leave this in here for a little while, but it will eventually change to the. Uh, FMS unit because that's at the moment the most powerful 80 millimeter. I'll gain it, it loses weight with it with the FMS and it has more thrust, so you're actually gaining in two ways. So let's get that thing apart. Looks like they heat shrinked everything, which is fine. They did. It's not going to be easy to get apart. Hmm. Well, guess what? I have another nine blade. So I'm going to grab that one. And then we're going to do that. So give me a second, guys. I will be back.
Okay, so as I said, they have made this a little hard to get to because they, uh, and it's a good thing they did this. They put heat shrink on the motor connections, which is actually a really good thing because that's um, going to prevent them from arcing on each other or falling apart in flight when something shifts. Let's see. So, this, it's probably plugged into a board. So, I'm not going to mess with the stock one right now. I'm just going to do the install. This is the same fan. This is just from a uh, MiG-29, which is the same exact fan. So, I'm going to install that on here. I'm not going to pull all this out because it is pretty well secured and I don't want to eat up a whole bunch of time on here. So this is just going to go back in and then I will get all that done at a later time. But this is the fan here, same fan, nine blade with a 1920 kV motor. So let's see how this thing fits on there. And then I'll um, set it up so you guys can see. So the way that these little holes here are set up, they're set up in a way that gives them plenty of room. They don't get pinched. They don't get... Uh, smushed it all like you know, my, some of my older designs are a little bit um, harder to get the wires through so my 3d printer guy helped me out with uh, making it a little bit easier to get into that way so what I'm gonna do normally with my kit I will include um, some zip ties and those zip ties are for um, two reasons number one you could use it to secure this and make it just the way that you do it or you can do what I do which is just use the zip ties to position it get it right and then um, glue it in place remove the zip ties let me go grab a zip tie All right, so I'm back. Let's see. Nathaniel pulling. <laughs> no, no midget strippers. So I'll save that for Dave's RC and some other people. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, I have the zip tie for two reasons. Uh, some people like to use the zip ties to hold it in place, which you can do. Just when you do that. Okay. Hold it out here where you can see. You put the zip tie on. All of this is out of the airstream, which is important. Keeps from uh, reducing thrust. So we put that there. You can only get it so tight if you do it hand tight. So I have this thing, which is called a zip tie tightener. It's kind of cool. It will um, tighten way tighter than you can by hand or with pliers and then snip it on the same thing. So the one thing that you want to do if you do decide to use a zip tie 
is to make sure that it's in line with the wires here so that it's not causing any extra disturbance. So get the tightener, get it on there, and if you pull, as soon as you pull it, reaches that certain tension, it comes off. So still a little, did somebody loosen it? That seemed like it was kind of loose. Seemed loose. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, that wasn't very tight. I think somebody loosened it. Can't remember. Anyway, so you use that to hold it in place. It's really not right now because the tightener didn't totally go on. But I think it's good enough. So other thing you do is you line it up. You can kind of eyeball it. Take these two tabs. I'm not going to hit it right on the camera right now, but take these two tabs here and try to line everything up to make it look like it's going straight out. I'm going to do that here. Need a little bit of tweaking. Just a little bit. And it's straight. So what I like to use to permanently secure these things in place is thick CA. Um, this is regular thick CA. Um, if you get the larger quantities like this, they actually come out to be a lot cheaper. And I use this style um, accelerator because this is the least. It does cure fast, but it also cures in a way that leaves it clear. So I've used a couple others that I actually stopped using because they make everything white, which I dislike. So let's get that part done. The glue opened. Get that ready. So let's make sure this is set up and pointing the proper direction. There it is. Looks good. Okay, so now we're going to glue. One thing you always want to note too, make sure it's straight this way. Don't look at other things because sometimes the prints are a little bit off as far as where their lines are. It's always best to use these two tabs for reference and look straight at it and then you'll be able to figure out if it's straight or not. If you try to use the lines around here, those could be off. So it's best not to use those. Just look at the LED itself, eyeball it and get it straight. Let's go that way. That's pretty close right there. So that's going to be what it is. I'll take the glue. Now the way that I do the glue, I make a bead. Because whenever there's a smooth surface, the uh, air is it's easier for the air to travel around a smooth surface. Spray that and see it makes a little lip. So you spray it. And it makes a little lip in there. So it's instead of the air just hitting it, it actually go, it hits and goes up and over. It makes it less, um, less turbulent. Go grab some, grab a paper towel. I always take a paper towel and dry off the excess. There's a little bit left here, so let's put some more there. Okay. Um, spray that. 
Let's sit for a few seconds and start and dry it off. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but in here, there's actually a transition. It's, it's a smooth transition. So instead of it just being a flat, flat spot in the way, it's actually beveled in a way that makes it smoother. So cut the uh, zip tie off since we're not going to use that. Or just pull it off. Looks like it's loose enough to just pull. No point in cutting. It'll just slide from that knife and you could probably end up cutting yourself. So we will just pull it off like that. Now, since I've got all this extra stuff in the way with the plane, I'm probably just going to show you how it works outside of the plane because uh, I didn't realize they'd actually done a really good job buttoning everything up in there. Those wires are actually um, permanently in place, which is good. That means that they won't um, ever come loose the hard landing or jolt or any kind like that. So that should work pretty good. All right, so I'm going to pull this motor out, set it off to the side. And I'm going to feed this in. This is all temporary because I've got to do it the right way. So I'll feed that through just to do just so that I can get this in there and show you what it looks like. I'm not actually going to run the wires just because it's going to take a lot of extra time. I'm not going to do that right now. So that's in there. Let me put two screws just to hold it. Because normally you'd run this wire clear up to the front but I can't do that because I'm limited on time I don't want to keep you guys too long and I, it's going to take a lot of fiddling to undo the, uh, the ESC wires because I have to get an exacto knife and cut it I can't just pull it so let's do that piece come on now it looks brighter in here than it really is. I have it dark so that it doesn't show up crazy bright on the screen. It shows up just enough so you can see. I think one. No, I'll spend one more just to be safe. Another thing you should check too when you go to doing this, make sure that these wooden mounts are secure. A lot of times the glue that they use don't really hold it in place. So this is a time to check and make sure that they're loose, that they're, they're not loose, and secure them with um, regular CA. Thick CA is usually the best. But, um, I have the wrong screwdriver. Put that in. Hmm. No, I don't think they dropped any. Okay, so that's in its place. That fan's just going to hang off the side. This is going to go in place. I'm not going to glue it. Just going to slide it on. So we can see what it looks like. Okay, so that's on there. That forward. Okay. So, let me check the chat here. Yeah, I know Victor got out to fly today, which was cool. 
Looks like it was going to be a decent day where I was too, but where I would normally go, but I didn't bother. Too much to do. Yeah, see, uh, Gary, it's always good to check those things because they come loose. If you start hearing a fan make a, a horrible noise and you know it's balanced, a lot of times it's your mouth that's loose. So let's get the – let me get this set up where you guys can see first off. Because I don't think you could see – the fiery booty as it is right now. So let me get my servo tester and all that stuff set up so that you can see. The servo tester that plugged in here. And then that's already plugged in. So you have the external battery. Normally this would be the flight battery, but since we're not powering up the plane, we're just going to power up the I'm just going to power up the uh Fiery booty itself. So let's do that right now. All right, so it's fired up. I'm just going to leave it that way for now and then I'll move it. So there, wow, they put a really thin coat of foam. I mean, a thin coat of paint. For sure, the paint would have been thicker than that. Again, this isn't, um, this is just on. It's not in place. So that's what it would be at half throttle. It's kind of flickering a little bit. It's slow, gradually increasing, and that's the full. Barely on. And full. Now, what I'm disliking is the fact that they didn't put a very thick coat of paint on this. It's a very thin coat of paint. So everything's coming through. And, yeah, the, the kicker, I usually keep the kicker away from the paint because it will go through. And this is a very thin coat of paint. So if I've got any qualms with them, yes, the plane looks great. But look at how thin that paint is. That's barely anything there. That's like half a coat. So that's something I'm going to have to work on. I might have to put more paint on the outside or put something on the inside. I could probably put um, – this is going to be easy for um, for uh, aluminum tape if I wanted to. So cool. That looks good. So now I will tilt it up so you guys can see from the inside. Sorry if you see a whole bunch of other crap, other noises. So. That's full bright. And then it's down to flicker. So cool. So this is, and this battery is not charged. This is a uh, storage charge battery. There you go. It's super bright. So that's it. So that's all we're going to do with this thing today. Um, and I will get all the rest of the stuff done and get some flight footage. Wife will be out there with the camera um, to take uh, some good pictures and and the video going but yeah this is a pretty cool plane I'm liking what I see so far there's a couple things the only thing I dislike at the moment is that they uh, kind of skimped on the paint 
There's barely any paint on there. But, um, cool. So, switch back to so you can see me. So, that is it. Um, yeah, we've barely been on an hour, so it wasn't too bad. Only would have taken me a little bit longer to run the wires, but I'm not going to bother with that right now just because I don't want to keep everybody too long. Let me grab my camera from up there. Um, oops. So, um... Anybody got any questions while I'm still here? My phone has been buzzing off the hook, so I'm sure that people have been either sending emails or something else. Yeah, I got lots of emails. Anyway, uh, any other questions? Now's the time. Um, Airvex, yes, you can use metal. Um, I use aluminum tape. Um, it's a pain to put in, but the results are usually pretty good. I think the best thing to do is use um, a thin coat of, of white paint. That's what I've done on a few of my planes, and it helped big time. And it was way better than um, using, using the tape, because the tape takes a long time to get set up right. Uh, Victor, yeah, the problem with the uh, using a camera trying to get video of the burner during the day, your camera focus fast enough because um, you can see it visibly um, throughout the day. It's pretty easy. It's really bright, um, but it doesn't show up well on camera. So, so the KV, um, the FMS motor that I will be using, it's the whole setup. Um, these are 3650 size motors, and I believe the uh, motors on the, and I already know, the motors on the FMS are smaller and lighter, but they produce more power. The ones on the, um, on the FMS are 2100 KV, and they are 3280 size, so 32 millimeters instead of 36. So that's quite a bit less. It means a lot less, um, a lot less weight. But then they also produce more actual thrust. So you're going to gain in two areas. You're going to gain because of the the weight will go down. But then on top of that, it's going to make more power, more thrust than the original motor. So you're going to gain in two areas. You're going to gain in weight. You're going to lose weight, but then you're going to gain thrust. So you're actually gaining quite a bit more than what you had with the stock setup. Totally worth it. So if there aren't any other questions, I think that I'm just going to cut it short because it's like people are jumping out of here now. It's down to 15. But um, Anything else y'all want to ask me while you got me here? Because I will be back tomorrow for the live, the, the regular live, um, at 7.15 my time, which is 10.15 in the other time zones. But um, if that's it, then I'm just going to go. Let's. Uh, I know the chat's a little slower. Oh, chat is a little bit slower in the program that I'm using. Somebody just posted a video right now. A couple pieces of people posted videos right now. Um, so let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, if you guys have any questions... You can always leave questions in the comments for this video, um, or you can, you know, you know how to get a hold of me. But what I really appreciate is if you guys like and subscribe on here because that helps with um, 
pretty much everything. Especially with these crazy algorithms that um, YouTube has now. But um, like, subscribe, post videos, you know, post my videos places, tell people about my page. I have um, merchandise now if you guys want. That's what's scrolling down on the bottom of the screen. If you haven't seen my actual website, you want to go there. And check this out here. That's my actual website there. That's just to give you um, info on how to get a hold of me. Um, I've gotten a lot of people from all over the world. I just had a guy today from the Czech Republic. I had another guy from... Yeah, Czech Republic. A couple places. A lot of places. All over the world. I'm shipping these all over the world. Switzerland, Belgium, Germany... Um, Ireland, um, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, uh, what's his name? Mr. John T was the first one in New Zealand, but I've sipped them all over all the different coast of, um, Australia. I've sent them to Japan. I've sent them, I haven't sent anything to China. That kind of scares me, but I've sent something to Dubai that they've been all over. So get a hold of me if you do want a burner. Um, or you have any questions about RC in general, um, you can email me at guniak33 at gmail.com um, or check us out on the streams Monday. Monday nights, 7.15 p.m. Pacific time. Um, Nate and I will be on there acting like fools. Neither of us flew this weekend. He flew the real thing this weekend, and I didn't fly in the RC, but check us out there and i am out thanks to all of you oh, also you guys that are members i changed up my member program so it might have sent you an email saying that the stuff that you've already subscribed to has changed i'll go over that in detail tomorrow but i basically just made my membership one level so it'll be um 6.99 a month if you guys decide to join that helps me out a lot because i'm able to do stuff here for the channel and I will give um, backstage stuff so you'll be able to see Nate and I acting like idiots or other stuff that I would normally show. I'll show that to all of the uh, people that are behind the scenes. So that's it. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And that is it. Time to clean up and get ready for tomorrow. Adios.